Hi everyone, hi, how are you? Welcome to another video. So this is going to be part 3, the last part for probability distribution where we will learn about normal distribution, how to calculate and why we need to change this to normal. Okay, so uh, before we start, okay, don't forget to subscribe, like, share this with a friend uh, who you think will definitely benefit from. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so if you have already done this chapter in your school, okay, you by now should already know why we are uh, using normal distribution. Okay, before this, you learn binomial, correct? Okay, binomial, uh, why are you so down? Okay, binomial. Binomial, usually you do your calculations when the sample size, okay, that means the, your experiment, the size, like it's not too big, okay, it's normal. Uh, your N is usually not too big. So if let's say suddenly when you do experiment, your sample size, okay, that means the experiment that you do, uh, like for if you realize in part two, we got to do experiment for uh, 10 students, uh, okay, like uh, three times you shot, okay, you shoot and then you get a strike, all those things, right? So now let's say suddenly your sample size is very big. Example, like bigger than 30, 30 times, okay. So all this will, will affect the calculation if you use binomial. So if your sample size is already like more than 30 and then your probability of success is like a 0.5, Okay, 0 0.5. So, this will affect your calculation. Your calculation will be affected for binomial. So, instead of binomial, we will use normal distribution. We won't use binomial already. So, remember uh, why we are using normal is because uh, binomial you use for uh, just a standard sample size, okay? Usually it's below 30, not sometimes even if like uh, 20 also, you can already use normal, can. But uh, normal, you see like your sample size is more than 30 and your probability of success is usually 0 0.5, okay? You can use the normal distribution. Now, how, do you still remember how to write the <coughs> binomial notation? Previously, we wrote like this for binomial notation, isn't it? N and P. Okay, so the N was your, your sample size, and then your P was your uh, probability of success. For normal, okay, we will write X, okay, N, N is for normal, uh, mean and the variance. Okay, the variance. So, this is how you write, this is the way you write the notation. Okay, take note. Uh, this is the way you write the notation. Now, uh, usually, okay, the reason why you are making it into a normal distribution is because you are going to write now, okay, uh, the data and the, let's say the, what is that? The sample size that you are going to do the calculation, right? Okay, uh, what's going to happen now is you're going to create a center for the entire uh, distribution. Okay, so you're going to make it into a skewed shape. Okay, so this is x. Okay, usually this is your fx here. Okay, uh, so what's going to happen is your you will get like a bell shaped kind of uh, graph. Okay, a bell shaped kind of graph diagram. So here in your graph, it must be symmetrical. Okay, so the middle part will always be the mean. Middle here will always be the mean, uh, the mode, okay, and the median. So can you see, you are doing, uh, not enough space here, okay, median. You are doing, uh, how to say, uh, like like a big scale of experiment, you are, you are going to do calculation for a very big scale of experiment, okay, so that's why you want to find a probability, but now you are skewing it. Okay, so you're making all of it come to the center. So the mean is going to be the center. Okay, so the half part, okay, the left part of this is going to be 0 0.5. And the other half here is going to be 0 0.5. So actually the entire thing total must always be 1. 
the entire thing total must always be one okay now also what you need to take note here is okay can you see these parts here and here okay the end parts okay the end parts there they usually will never touch they won't touch the x axis like you won't, won't go and touch like that no ah huh? it doesn't touch so it's always like uh, just above okay and this is the notation that you use for this graph okay so this is the notation that we are using so take note from here this is changing ah huh? so our entire uh, calculation now is changing from binomial to normal. Okay, so from binomial to normal. Alright. So it's very important that you know, okay, half of the graph is 0 0.5. Uh, the whole thing is 1. Ah? Okay, now uh, let's look at uh, finding like values, okay, values of uh given normal distribution okay this is still normal distribution all right because then later i don't want teacher on you guys to get confused with standard normal okay what is that later okay now it's just normal distribution graph okay so i'm going to give uh, an example okay let's look at one more example so now let's look at this example here okay uh you are given a stand a normal diagram shows a normal distribution graph okay this is a continuous random variable x huh? okay state the mean of the distribution so obviously mean is always going to be the middle one okay so the middle value is so the mean is going to be 52 okay so mean is simple mean will always be the middle one okay uh b if your probability of x smaller than 42 is 0 0.2176. Okay, take note up. Huh? x smaller than 42 means this part is 0 0.2176. Okay, so usually, okay, usually whatever that is on the left side here will be same as the right hand side. So this side also, okay, will usually be the same value. Right, it's just going to be the same value huh? because it's a skewed graph, meaning that uh, the graph is already like uh, you have the middle, you know, so the values on the left and right will always be the same. Okay, so just take note of that. Huh? Okay, so this is the information given to us. Okay, so if the probability of x smaller than 42 is 0 0.2176, find okay, probability of x greater than 62. Now, probability of x greater than 62 is the same, uh, can you see, okay, can you see, uh, it's the same side as this side, isn't it? Both of them are the same, right? Okay, so since both of them are the same, so you can write here, this is equals to 0 0.2176, okay? So there's no any calculation needed because the shape or the type of the graph is like that. All right, next. Let's look at B, the second one. Probability of X, okay, between 52 and 62. So, between 52 and 62 means it's this part, isn't it? Okay, can you see, yeah? Okay, this part. Between 52 and 62, okay. So, that means it's just half, half of this part of the graph on here. So, what is half of the graph? That's not it. I got already did for you all here. Half of the graph is 0 0.5. Okay, so what can we do to find this this one, this part? We take 0 0.5 minus here means we will get the balance here, right? Okay, so that is what we're supposed to do. Huh? So always take note of the uh, the graph. Like is it half? Half means 0 0.5. The entire graph means 1. The unit, the unit will be 1. Okay, so probability of 52, uh, sorry, x between 52 and 62 is going to be, okay, 0 0.5 minus 0 0.2176. Okay, so we minus, we get 0 0.2824. So the part where here, okay, this one is 0 
two four. Okay, so actually it's very easy. Okay, normal graph is actually easy. Okay, not hard or anything. All right. Next third one, find the probability x bigger than forty two. Okay, so here is forty two. Bigger than forty two means so big bigger. So all this entire thing. This whole thing. Alright. Now, what can we do? Very easy. Okay. We already know this part here is 0 0.2176. So, what is the value for the entire graph? Entire graph is 1 unit, isn't it? The entire thing is 1 unit. So, we take 1 minus this part means we will get the entire greater than 42. Okay. So, teacher, hope you guys are following up. Huh? Okay. So, the third one, probability of x greater than 42. So, I'm going to take 1. 1 is always the total. Okay. Total for the normal graph. Minus 0 0.2176. Okay. So, if in this case, minus, we get 0 0.78. 0.7824. So this kind of graphs, okay, very very simple, can be easily find. You can easily find the answer from the given graphs here, okay? Alright. Um, okay. So I think this is going to leave you guys with one question for this time. Okay, then we will go to uh, to convert normal distribution to standard normal. Alright. Okay, so this is your question. Find the area of the shaded regions on the given diagram. Okay. Uh, this one is given. Huh? So you have to look at the given one. Okay, this is your given diagram. So, from the given, okay, you can see the middle part is 0 0.526. Now, what you need to find is, find this part, the shaded part, how much, okay, the probability, and another B is find this entire thing here. Okay, so teacher hope, okay, that you guys can give a try. If you get the answer, you can write in the comment section below, and I will get back whether your answer is correct or not, all right? So, pause this video, give it a try, and I'll see, I'll continue with standard normal distribution. If you can get this, that means you already understand the concept very well. So now, let's look at standard normal distribution. Now, why do we have from normal, before this we learn normal, okay? Why from normal, now we need to change to standard normal? Now, this, was, uh, this is like a question that most students will think of. Or sometimes maybe you don't, you just, uh, you know, you just study because, okay, the textbook is already asking us to study this. Now, usually, like uh, back when before the computers and all were invented, right? Okay. Uh, we usually do calculations based on standard normal. Okay. Because like uh, standard normal will make the parameters... Okay, the parameters means like uh, your, uh, what value you look at. Okay, for example, I'm doing experiment to find the height of students. Okay, find the height. So, if I want to find the height for like the entire school, okay, instead of using normal graph, I choose to do a standard normal graph. That will give me a better view and better calculation for me to uh, see the numbers behind it. So back before the computers and all were invented, we use standard normal table. But now with computers, you can make the distribution function uh, even more standardized by using the algorithms. Okay, but then there's also another advantage is if you use standard normal, okay, uh, your case will be more centralized because you're using central theorem. All right. Now, these are all quite like uh, bombastic terms for you to know. Uh, but it's a good uh, intro, okay? So, because if let's say you decide to study maths later in the future for your degree or, you know, engineering or what, this is something, all the terms that you will come across, okay? 
But for now, okay, what you need to do, you need to know is number one, uh, if you have a normal distribution graph, okay, uh, this now, this is was our graph, right? Okay, normal. Okay, now I'm drawing the normal graph with that. So, zero was here and you will have your mean here, correct? So, mean will usually be a value. Sometimes it can be any value. Maybe mean is three or something like that. Okay, but this is normal. When you are changing it to standard normal, Okay, changing to standard normal graph. So, so we are changing the standard uh, from normal to standard normal means. Okay, what will happen is, okay, now your graph you will draw this way. Okay, the diagram will come like this. Here is 0, isn't it? Ah, okay, now so your mean will be, okay, your mean will be zero that is already called we are standardizing we are standardizing okay so here if your x is still normal your mean and then you'll write your variance but here what's going to happen is you will have uh, x so this one is already standardizing right so you use z okay normal Zero will be the mean, okay? But here, the we will use standard deviation. Standard deviation will be 1. Okay, we will use standard deviation 1. Okay. So, this process, when you are changing from normal to standard normal, is called the process of standardizing data. Okay, process of standardizing data. Standardizing data. Some people use the S, okay? Teacher use Z, okay? Process of standardizing data. Now, here, how you standardize your normal graph to become a standard normal is you use this formula. Okay, Z equals to X minus the mean divided by standard deviation. Okay? So, why are we doing this? Because we want to make our uh, data more standard. Because like straight away, we know mean must be 0. Standard deviation is mean. Huh? Standard deviation must be 1. It's a definite. Okay, it is a definite. So there's no like, uh, you cannot change to... Because if here means your mean can be different values. Different uh, data gives you different values. But here, when you change it to this data... Your mean must be 0, standard deviation must be 1. Okay, this is a massa. Huh? So, remember this. Mean must be 0 and your standard uh, deviation is always 1. Okay, now, uh, so you should know what is Z. Okay, so Z is the Z score. Okay, it's a continuous random variable for the standard normal di distribution. Uh, X is your continuous random variable from your original, uh, remember your original normal? Original normal, we use X, isn't it? This one, okay? Original normal, we use X. So, when you're changing to Z, that's why we call the Z score, okay? And you, this one, you know, uh, uh, this is mean, mu, you should say mu, and this is your standard deviation, okay? Now, uh, let's look, okay, because in your exam, this question is very popular in paper 2. Okay, so usually the types of question that comes out for paper 2 is, you will have three ways, three ways or three types questions can come out. Okay, number one, okay, if you are, if you are following teacher, do write this down, okay, easy for you to uh, know this, okay, you will have formula. You have to use formula. That means you have to use the Z, X minus mu over standard deviation. Okay. Another way uh, questions can come out is the value of Z is given. So you have to, this kind of question means you can use calculator to find the answer. Okay. So you can use calculator. Another type question can come out is value of Z not given. I'm talking about the big Z. Huh? Okay. Value of Z. Not given. 
this one cannot use calculator cannot use calculator okay what you have to do is you have to use your table you have to use table method okay we have to use table method okay what is the table let me show you the table all right can you see this ah uh, are you familiar with this table so this table is given in spf okay it's given uh, if you see here this is the upper tail okay they only give you the upper tail upper tail means this part of the graph the upper tail okay they give you the upper tail of the graph that means the left hand side if you want to find whatever on the left hand side just refer to the right hand side for example if let's say here the value is 0.367 so from here the, the value is 0.367 okay so later we will go through more in detail okay uh, make sure you have this paper uh, if you don't have you can always download okay uh, google we have all right and also like uh, you can get it from even past year paper questions all they have a lot of the uh, upper tail normal distribution graph all right so now let's look at okay so let's look at all the three different types of question uh, formula value of z given and also value of z not given all right so teacher is going to write the question first okay before we go to uh this one we use the we try to do using the formula one first okay the first one so now let's look at example of okay this one example for using the formula you want to use formula to standardize okay given your x is normally distribution uh, distributed with mean of 10 standard deviation so mean here is 10 standard deviation is 3 find the z score so here z score means we need to find the z all right for each of the following so that means we are doing the process of standardizing. So Z score, okay, Z will be, uh, take your X, okay, minus your mean, divide by standard deviation. So what is our X given here? 12. So 12 minus the mean is 10 divided by 3. Okay, so let's find the answer here. 12 minus 10 divide 3 is okay 0 0.666667 so usually you write your answer in decimal because our graph when we draw also okay the z score all will be in decimal same goes for b okay similar okay z equals to x minus the mean so x is 8.5 minus our mean is 10 divided by standard deviation 3 so 8.5 minus 10 divide 3 we get negative 0 0.5 so remember negative means will be on the left hand side of the graph okay left hand side positive will be on the right hand side of the graph okay so this is how you find the uh, z score okay similar if also if you have z score that you have to find in between okay in between also same all right now we're going to look at uh, how to do the um, value of z given okay so now we're going to use calculator okay teacher is going to also use calculator but before that i'm going to just show you the method first okay if you're going to use calculator means what uh, you need to do all right so let me write that first now let's look at how to calculate the value of z, okay, how to calculate the value when z is given, lah, okay, because z is given. Now, uh, some of you must you might use the black calculator, mm, some of you may be using the white. So for black, this is what you should do, just press mode, mode, SD, distribution, for white, you're going to do this. So teacher is going to show my calculator here, but it's going to be the white one. Okay, but before we go into the calculator, you need to know a few things. So, if you are writing this down, it will be very good, easy for you. Okay, P. Okay, if you see the letter P, P is for anything that you shade towards the left-hand side. For example, you can shade this way. Okay, shade to the left. Okay, shade to the left side. 
or you can also from here we shade all the way to the left like this okay so usually there will be two graphs like this huh? one is on the negative side one is from the positive side so your z might be here lah. okay this is your z score all right if q means q will be for the middle your shade shading to the middle shade to the mid all right so how for example from here teacher shade all the way to this part middle okay you can see the middle ah middle is a zero all right middle is always with a zero all right let me write this also zero okay if here what you can do is from here also you can shade to the middle like this all right so this is q remember the letters okay r R means you shade to the right. Easy to remember. R is right. Okay, shade to the right. So here, 0, 0. Uh. Okay, shading to the right means, okay. Look uh, carefully. Uh. Hold on one minute. Okay. My screen suddenly became bigger. Hold on. Okay, sorry for the disruption. Okay, so here we are going to shade. Uh, to the right so for example let's say it's from here means the negative negative z are here so we shade to the right so you use r or if your z score is positive here all right now just how to find the values okay now let's say teacher give example for a yeah? okay a okay let's say okay, if you're following this together with teacher you also can write down this yeah? it's very like important for you to understand this is very important. Okay, now let's say, uh, okay, the question is, find the probability Z smaller than 1.3. Okay, Z smaller than 1.3. So what you do, okay, first you draw. Okay, always when you get probability distribution, uh, normal distribution graph, you have to find the Z, draw first. Okay, this is a positive 1.3. Okay, so it's which side? From here, so when I say here 1.3, yeah. so it's smaller than so you just shape the left hand side. Okay, so left hand side, which letter should we use? P. Okay, let me just bring my calculator first. Okay, so teacher, hope you guys can see my calculator right now. Uh, look at the calculator. Okay, it went off. Hold on, huh? Okay, for the calculator now. Okay, look at the calculator here. Our value for P uh, is to the left hand side, right? Okay, so before that, let's set the mode first. Okay, if you're using black, follow the black one. If you're using white, okay, first press mode, okay? Then press stat. Stat here is number 3. So I'm going to press number 3. Then press AC. Okay, AC is your off button. Okay, then press shift. Shift, okay, and then press 1. Can you see all these coming out first, okay? So, pause this if you are not following, it's too fast. Okay, then press D-I-S-T-R, number 5, because distribution. So, number 5, huh? Okay, now, which one, which uh, one we are solving currently? We are solving for left-hand side. So, left-hand side must use P. So, choose number 1. Number 1. Okay, then key in your letter, uh, key in the number 1.3. Then equals to. Can you see? Straight away get your answer. So your answer here is P, right, uh, equals to, so this one, you go straight away, just going to write P, Z smaller than 1.3 is equals to 0 0.9032. That means here the entire area, okay, here the entire area is 0 0.9032. Okay, that's what it means, huh? Okay, so this is one example. Okay, now let's say we try the one that's going to the right. Find the probability Z bigger than and equals to 1.3. Okay, let's say you have like this. First step, always, always draw the graph. Okay, so always the middle will be 0. Okay, draw the graph. Alright, greater than 1.3. So, 1.3 is on the positive side here. Okay, so which side we should shift over to the right side. So, probability of Z greater than equals to 1.3. Since 
it's to the right right we uh, we must use r okay it's just going to go back <coughs> excuse me to my calculator okay press back uh, on okay so now press back uh, shift one okay distribute five okay press number three right right one point three how much is the value here 0 0.0968 so the area is 0 0.0968 so this is how you find the area using calculator easier okay now let's look at if let's say your question is uh, in the middle okay the graph is in the middle for example find the probability from of z between negative 0 0.7 to 0 point uh, to 1.3 Okay, all the way to 1.3. So, first step, always draw the graph. Okay, so draw the graph. Z, here 0. Okay, the graph is not skewed properly. Okay. Alright, now uh, we're going to label up. So, negative 0 0.7 is probably somewhere here. Okay, and then 1.3 is probably somewhere here. So, we are finding the area between here. Finding the area between here. So since it's in the middle, okay, so we are going to use Q. Isn't it? Q is to the middle. So what you're going to do is, okay, going to find Q negative 0 0.7. That means find like this part first, okay, following up. Okay, find that part first, then plus with Q 1.3, this part. Okay, so now... So now I'm going to show using the calculator. Okay, so going back to the calculator. Okay, uh, shift one, number five. Okay, this time we're just going to use number two, Q. Huh? So Q negative 0 0.7 plus again, uh, shift one, five. Okay, two Q again, because we're choosing Q again, right? Plus 1.3. So one shot we plus all this we get 0 0.66124. So this is our area 0 0.66124. So if you are using the black calculator, it's the same method, huh? same just the way teacher did. It's just that you guys for black calculator uh, 570, you just have to use these three uh, things on it to set your calculator. Okay. So, teacher hope the second method is okay for you guys. Alright. It's really easy. Okay. It's very easy. Uh, do try some questions using this uh, this method, calculator. Let teacher know how has it been easy for you all. Alright. So, you can also use the uh, table method. Okay. You can. But, uh, teacher want you guys to learn that at school. Okay. I'm going to show the calculator because anyhow in exam, you guys can use calculator. So, it's going to save your time. All right, so I'm going to move on to the last type of question. So that's now we did, yeah, this one. We already done formula. We already done value of Z. Now we're going to do value of Z not given where we are going to use the table. All right. So now let's look at how to calculate the value of Z not given. So we cannot use calculator in this. Okay, so for this, teacher is going to shut down my calculator. Okay, now if since we cannot use calculator, usually how they will give you the question is they'll give you find the probability of z okay greater than m uh, equals to 0 0.3 for example now usually here okay this is z greater than m right but actually your z score is the m because okay for example now we draw this okay here is your z okay here is let's say the m greater than so this part up okay now your z why did you say is there because this is z this is m isn't it so you are actually your z is the m okay but here what we are finding now is this value this is the z score lah. okay the z score that you're going to find from the table okay this one you need to find from the table so we're not right now okay this one you have to find from the table now, what is this area? This is the area given. That means this is the 0 0.3.
k0.3 is positive right so the area given here now how do you find from the table this is why you need to get your table ready keep this table with you okay it's going to be very important all right so we're going to get started okay let's see first you need to know your basics huh? okay what are the basics you need to know okay number one mm, okay if you have your entire graph okay you draw your entire graph like that and if like the entire graph is shaded that means it is one unit okay this is first basic okay second if let's say your graph is uh, only shaded over here okay make sure you know that that means here your z score is positive here must be positive value all right and if let's say, okay, if it's the opposite means, let's say teacher shade this side, that means your Z score here must be negative. Huh? Okay. Then uh, also please know that if let's say only half of the graph exactly is shaded, you can see until here, half of the graph huh, is shaded, that means your Z score here, that means the entire area is 0.5. So here the entire area is 1, here the entire area is 0 0.5. Okay, these are just a few basic. Now, there are a few steps that you can follow for you to know, find a value when uh, Z is not given. Okay, first always make sure you draw. Draw the graph, first step. Okay, please write this down. Okay, draw the graph. Second, uh, oh sorry, sorry, not draw graph first, sorry. So, draw the graph is second step. First is always make sure you Z the thing. You make it standard normal. Okay. First step, uh, always make it standard normal. If they give you X, change it to Z. Okay. You must change to Z. Change to standard normal. After you change only, second step is we draw the graph. Okay. So, when you draw the graph, later I'll show you okay, how to draw. Third step, find the hole. You need to find the hole. Okay, later I'll show you what hole. And the last step is see the table. Alright. So remember these four steps. It will help you. Okay, now um, let's look. Okay, at one question for example here. Yeah. Okay, if you haven't copied this or are writing down, pause the video. Write and make sure you understand first. Okay. P z is greater than k equals to 0 0.2 okay now what is our first step change to standard normal this is already in z so <coughs> first step we can skip no need to change okay then second step draw the graph okay usually okay until you become uh, expert okay in identifying okay usually draw two graph okay draw two graph huh? Okay, one, because this is greater than, okay, maybe it can start from here and greater than like that. Maybe. Or can start from here, greater than this way, also can. Now, which one looks more logic for the area 0 0.2? Okay, of course this one, isn't it? Looks more logic 0 0.2. This one is already more than 0 0.5. So, this graph cannot. Ah, so this is why teacher want you to draw two graphs first. Okay, practice drawing two graphs first. Identify which one here. So 0 0.2 is over here. Alright, so this is your Z. That means this is the K lah you're going to find now. Okay, so the second step we do already. Now, draw a hole. Okay, why we are drawing a hole is because, okay, draw a hole here, draw a hole here. Can you see like this is actually like a nose? Like this one. And then you draw a hole here draw a hole here okay like a nose isn't it so you're drawing two nose trails lah okay two nose strings now which side here of the value we are finding the left side or the right side so obviously we have the right side nose trail isn't it so now let's look at our table okay it's just going to go to table so this is the area 0 0.2 right okay look at the table 0 0.2 now can i make it bigger okay 0 0.2 don't go and find this one as 0 0.2. No, this is all the 
values that uh, what is that you write at the graph like for example this is your graph okay you can see uh, let me make it a bit smaller 100 I think this is okay all right okay let's say this is your graph okay then this this z all right that you are seeing all this one okay these values all are actually like over here like a 0 0.3 okay or 1.8 like that right that is like all for the, the, the what is that tails the area okay that's now the area was 0 0.2 right so the area wall are inside inside here all is the area so please take note okay outside here all is for the graph the for you to know the value at the axis there the z okay now let's look at let's find 0 0.2 so this is where you need to be very sharp at finding 0 0.2 uh, we want exactly 0 0.2 so look here this one we have 0 0.02 no we want 0 0.2 okay let's keep going up that means up here 0 0.02005 ah can we you can use this okay we can use this okay and we have to minus can you see there's a uh, entire column here for minus Okay, why they give us this is because we want this now 0 0.2 only, isn't it? We want it. But here goes 0 0.2005. So that's why they gave us behind here for you to minus. Here when you minus, which number we don't want? We don't want the 5. So we minus 0 0.005. Behind here all is 0 0.00. Okay, it's like that. So 0 0.2 minus 0 0.005. Hold on, uh, 0 0.005, uh, 0 0.005, okay, this one got another 0, here. got 3 zeros, okay, 0 0.005, alright, so you will get, me erase back, okay, again one more time up, okay, 0 0.2005, take this one first, okay, minus this number, isn't it, the 5, Okay, this is the 5 we took. So, minus 0 0.0005. So, when you minus, what do you get? 0 0.2. This is the area that we wanted. Yes. So, from here now, look at the Z score. 0 0.842. Can you see? So, this is how you see. 0 0.842. Alright, so now going back to our question. So this was our area. So the probability from the Z table. Huh? So from the Z table, we got the value of 0 0.842. So that means our K is 0 0.842. Okay, so I hope this you can understand well. Pause this or if you guys like need to see back or anything, okay, play in a slower speed or if you need to see this faster, play in a faster speed, alright, okay, now let's say this question, okay, first step always, you must make it Z, change to standard normal, okay, is this already in Z, yes, second step, you need to draw the graph, okay, if you... If you're still now learning, please draw two graphs. Okay, please draw two graphs. Make, your, make yourself familiarize. Then when you're expert and you know already, then you draw. Okay, let's say this is going to the left-hand side. Huh? So maybe from here, go here. Maybe from here, can go here also. Okay, now which one the area represents more for 0.889? Which one looks more like this? Can this be 0 0.889? Cannot, isn't it? That one is already very less. It's less than 0 0.5. So here cannot. This one, yes. It looks more like 0 0.889. Because bigger than 0 0.5. That means here is my Z. That means my M is here. So this is positive side. Huh? Positive side. Alright. So now step 2. We already draw the graph. Let's look at the uh no straight let's draw the hole okay here and we draw here now which no straight should we find 
Okay, if you're going to find here, it's going to be difficult because it's not half only, isn't it? You So you do what? You find the right-hand side nostril, okay? So find the value here. And then, find that means find the area, this part, huh, for this nostril. It's because 0 0.889, you will not get in your graph. Okay, if you see the graph again, okay, see what is the highest value here? 0 0.5. There won't be any numbers greater than 0 0.5 because we are using the upper tail. Upper tail means only until 0 0.5 lah, okay, uh, the positive one. So what you have to do is you need to use the another nostril, this nostril. So you need to find the area, okay, find the area for take one, that means the entire area, minus 0 0.889, okay. So, you need to find area for 0 0.111. Okay? You need to find area for 0 0.111. Here, this area, 0 0.111. Why you need to find for that? Because in your graph, in your table, you cannot get 0 0.889. So, that's why we take the another side mostly. The whole lah. Okay, now let's look at 0 0.111 from the table. 0 0.111. Okay, it is this. Okay, which one is here representing 0 0.111? Okay, let's look up. Okay, 0 0.111. Oh, here we have, yeah, here. Okay, 0 0.112. But we don't want the 2, so we can minus here. Minus the 2 here. Okay, this 2. Huh? So that means when I minus, it's going to be uh, 0. Point, okay, 1112 minus 0 0.0002. So you minus, we get 0 0.1112 minus 0 0.0002. We get 0 0.111. So this is the area that we wanted, right? Okay, so that case, we already got, look at the front. This is the Z score. So 1.221. Again, uh, 1.221. So, this is your Z score, the value. So, here our answer is going to be from the table. Okay, 1.22. What was it? Uh? <laughs> 1 1.221. Okay. 1.221. Done. Okay. So, to give you guys uh, two examples here. Okay, you guys can try as homework. Okay, some questions. Maybe I'll just give you about two questions. Uh, do let me know in the comment section what you guys get. So, if you haven't, if it's not standardized, you have to standardize first. Huh? How to standardize? We already learned. Do this process first. Okay, do this process first. Then only find the uh, value from the table. Okay, so teacher hope that uh, my entire, uh, what is this, uh, this entire video, right, my form of chapter 5 has helped you all. Please let me know uh, so that I can, you know, maybe uh, improve for the next time if you need like more questions or you want teacher to, you know, attach anything. Uh, so as you can see, this is all my, uh, actually this is all my tuition uh, classes notes, all right. So I know some of you students have been asking for teacher's notes, but I usually don't uh, give it because it doesn't come with answers. So you might find it difficult. All right, you might find it difficult. So I hope that you will subscribe, uh, give teacher a like, share this with many friends as possible. Thank you so much. All right, love you all. Take care. Bye.